All right. Okay. That's good. That was a little thing. And I, I think we're on to... Right, so there's a little section, Benford's Law, and then I'll start on this uh, fluid mechanics thing. I'm um, sorry, I don't know why I said that. Uh, fundamentals, they both start with F, that's about the only connection. Okay, Thursday. Mm. Benford's Law, so this is just a, this is a small piece. It's another scaling thing. It's just a, a fun piece to add. It could be, I guess, in other slides, but I've got it here. So, uh, you know, it's just a fun thing to know about. So this is a probably that if we, we have a big set of numbers, and it, it will depend, of course, where they come from. We can't just have pure random numbers, but just a lot of naturally occur, so that naturally is in quotes, naturally occurring sets of numbers have this property that if you look through all those numbers and then just look at the first digit in them, right, just the first digit, just ignore everything else, and then count up the frequencies. And so for, ten, you know, for, for uh, log base 10, we have one through nine, Right? No, nothing starts with a zero in a sense. Uh, it has this, this very, uh, it has this uneven distribution. It's not purely random, right? So as B increases, this number uh, um, decreases, right? It's one plus one over D. As D increases, I should have said. So it goes log two, log one over three, one plus one over three, right? Hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, it decreases very slowly, but it's it's enough to be sizable, right? So 30% of first digits are going to be one. That's a hugely weird discrepancy, and only around 4.5 for nine. So what's going on here? So uh, going back into the past, so we have, um, and this is I've talked about Stigler's law, so we'll get to Stigler's law in a second. So as far as we understand, so there's Newcomb, it's, but it's not called Newcomb's law, it's Benford's law. Newcomb, uh, in 1881, wrote a paper about it, uh, had noticed this. And a lot of this was to do with, I think, in both cases, I think with Newcomb, it was finding a, a book of logarithms, right? So you don't have to ever think about it, so maybe you're not even aware of this, right? But it used to be that we would have, one would have tables to look up for these things because you know, there were no calculators, right? Much less computers, right? We didn't have these things, or um, big levers to pull on things that would show you what the logarithm of 72 is. Okay, so we, you'd, have, you'd have tables and, and, and books, and, and they were unevenly, if you look, if a book that had been used a lot, it had an uneven wear pattern in terms of which pages were looked at. It wasn't what you would expect, right? So it turns out that it, it had this bias towards numbers that started with one. So Frank Benford, who was a physicist, studied, uh, found this again in 38, and, gets, and, and, and Benford's the one who gets the, uh, you know, the moniker on this one. Uh, so Stigler's law of eponymy, let, let's, uh, let's look at that. Uh, it is here, yes, it's pretty great. So uh, Stigler, whose father was a professor, but I don't think that matters here. So Stigler, and I know I've mentioned this um, in passing, uh, named wrote a paper on this and, and named it after himself and then pointed out that Robert Merton was actually the person who came up with this, right? Merton was the one who came up with all the catchphrases, uh, like self-fulfilling prophecy and so on. And so he was being very cheeky, but it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very important, um, okay, there you go, list of examples of Stigler's law. This is long. These are were named after the wrong person, basically, right? This goes on and on and on. Oh, that's what I did my whole uh, master's thesis on. Uh, yeah, Gauss's theorem, no. Gauss's distribution, de Moivre, sometimes, you know, de Moivre's name is around. Oh, no, 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 right? And um, a real phenomenon. I mean, I'm sure it happens with kind of everything, but this is, these are theorems and, and, and so on where it's ended up being the wrong one. Who knows who came up with Pythagoras first, of course. Anyway, that goes to my whole point of we shouldn't name it after people anyway. <coughs> like hurricanes, that's a bad idea. Okay, Stigler's Law, awesome. It's pretty great. So here are a couple of examples. And as I said, it's not every set of numbers, but there's just some weird sets. So fundamental constants, which is a strange one, right? This is just the universe provides these things, or we're set up with them. Someone turned the parameters on the universe box. Uh, utility bills, right? So these are your gas bills and so on. Uh, tax returns, so that's a problematic area because people are going to, if you want to make up random numbers and play around with things, you don't do this. You wouldn't create a Benford's Law thing. Uh, death rates, street addresses, um, just numbers in newspapers. Take the Wall Street Journal and just get all the numbers out of it. 
you know, just do a little simple thing. So, you know, it's been used. This is a recent piece of uh, the, the vote counts and so on. If you look through them, didn't have what you would expect in terms of the signature. This is for the Iranian elections in 2009. I don't think that had any weight whatsoever. Right? Um, you know, you imagine some geek holding up a, or just trying to share a Jupiter notebook with someone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just no. They're just like, no. <laughs> what do you even? What? What even is that? Okay. So uh, this is this is a terrible graph now in this day of having nice resolution. But uh, Bamford's law is the blue one, and this is an exact thing. This is from newspapers. I think that's the Wall Street Journal. This is just numbers from the 1990 census. Just feed it through a machine, get all the numbers out. Dow Jones numbers. So. Again, this really, this domination of, of numbers that start with one. I mean, it's just a weird thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool thing. So this is a paper from actually 98. Uh, physical constant of the universe, pretty crazy. So, right? I mean, it's not perfect, but it has, it has this unevenness. That one's weird. So what's going on? This is population of countries, also weird. And so here's a, here's a just a little bit about it that might, might help make sense. So this is, this is the observation that it has this probability, right? So it's uh, this quantity, right? So 1 plus 1 over d. This is decaying with d, as I said. So I guess for, for d equals 1, it starts at this whole thing is 2. For d equals 9, this is 1 plus 1 over 9, right? So it's decreasing very gradually. And then you've got a log around it. So, but still, as we saw, you know, 30 to 4% is very serious. Uh, so. Right? This is, this is just very simple algebra, right? This is d plus 1 over d, and that's log of d plus 1 minus log d, right? This is basic um, uh, logarithm rules. And so you can think about this as, okay, so it's, this is then the distance between, right? So if we have on a logarithmic plot, uh, we have, you know, 1 here and then 2 and then 3, right? They're going in. So it's the distance between them in, the, in log space. So it's contracting. And then that's repeated as you, if you say, you know, 1 through 9, and then 100 through 900, and 1,000 through 9,000, they all have the same structures. And so you could say, well, the probability of, and we'll do this log thing, uh, if we're in log space, is, it's just 1 times the distance between them, right? There's no, it's just uniform in, in log space. And if you do that, right? So we're going to say it's uniform, and if you just take this little guy here, and we just do the, and I've put in a log e to make it easier. If we just differentiate this, this differential, right, this is going to be 1 over x dx. So all of this really just becomes 1 over x dx. So this is a power law decay for this probability. It's OK. She doesn't, she's not leaving the course. Um, <laughs> power law. Um, go out the window. That would be great. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so a power law distribution again, but it's a very specific one. It's a, and of course, you know, you can't, we, we know 1 over x is not a sustainable thing, but it's a very uh, interesting one. So it's going to have some cutoffs. It's a very extreme case of gamma equals uh, 1. And, and so here are a couple of pictures of this. So this is sort of the idea, right? So if you have a, a thing that's kind of peaked or, or not even in log space, then things aren't going to match up so well. But if you have some sort of very relatively flat distribution in log space, then you're going to get blobs. So the ones are here and the ones are here. These are the nines, right? So there's some region for which this is roughly holding. Then you're going to get out something like Benford's law. Now, all sorts of processes are leading to these different number sets. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's really super well understood. I need to look at that again, I think. Benford's law. So this is just connecting it to the the observation that it's there's a that whatever the distribution is it has to be, or, you know how this distribution came about it must be rough somewhat flat, for at least some good region of log space. Uh, and maybe I didn't say this, but uh, it doesn't matter what base it is, right? You can just change base in log, and and you know that would just move this around, stretch it around, but it would still be the same shape in another log. What about log 7, log 46? Doesn't matter. So it's true for binary as well. All right. 
<laughs> so this happened, so this is a, a paper which is citations to articles citing Benford's law, a Benford analysis, and so of course it works out as well. So yeah, <coughs> which of course we did with them. Um, we did with the citations to the original scale-free network paper, which is about the rich get richer kind of model with our rich get richer first mover thing, because you have to, yeah. But I know, it can get a little too uh, out of control. I love this sort of thing. Okay, so a little bit meta. It's sort of a turducken analysis. All right, there are a couple of nice pieces. Again, this is from Radiolab from a while ago. Um, they uh, sort of have gone to pieces, I suppose. But they, they have an explicit piece on Benford's law, if you want to sort of listen to that, and you know, it's all enjoyably done with uh, things. And then this one is about numbers, and uh, it has a piece in there about uh, babies learning numbers and, uh, or having a sense of numbers. And it seems to be, and I, I don't know if this all holds up, but infants have a sense of, uh, a, like a logarithmic sense of numbers, right? So 1, 10, and 100 are sort of somewhat evenly spaced apart. Uh, and that seems to be true of um, peoples that do not have a number system or a spoken number system as well. Whether that all holds together, I don't know, but... Uh, you know, then we, we have to put the counting on top, and once you put the counting on top, you lose your sense of, you know, kind of a sense of logarithmicness. We have to think about it again. Okay, so that's a little bit of a, kind of an aside, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cool thing. It's very, it's, it's, it applies to many, many different um, systems, and it's uh, pretty weird. A friend of mine made a uh, second digit law. It's much weaker, but there's also some, some push there as well. Ridiculous.